time, as what I, I said the story about my nephew, yeah, who can stop him? Literally no one. He can do anything, he can say anything he wants as soon as the adults turn away from him. So in the same way, no one can stop us to say rude words or words that doesn't build up others. We may say alone, hide in the room or in our car, we can say aloud, um, cursing others. No one can stop you from doing that. Literally no one. So just like what I have said in this passage, we can tame all kinds of wild animals, we can tame the birds, reptiles, sea creatures, uh, the huge animals, elephants, uh, snakes, all kinds of animals, we can tame them and keep them as pets. But no one can tame the tongue of anyone. So what can we do then? James used this passage to uh, preach about um, the, the power of tongue. He used three analogies to describe the power of tongue. The first is um, in the passage, verses 3 to 8. Yeah, the first is about the uh, small piece of metal in the mouth of a horse to keep the horse obey the rider. So whatever the rider direct the horse, then the horse will just follow. By that small piece of metal, he can control the horse. And the by, um, what about the ships? The ships are big, but then they are controlled by a very small rudder. Compared to the size of the ship, the boat, yeah, compared to the wave, compared to the wind that is so strong, the small rudder can control where the ship goes. And then the third analogy is uh, the fire, uh, the the little fire, that, the spark that burned down the whole forest. Although the spark is just a small spark, but then when it started up, then the fire cannot be stopped and it will burn down the huge and big, um, great forest. And that happened all around um, the world as the climate change. Yeah, so from all these uh, three analogies, James tried to express that the power of Tan is great. It is so great that no one can tame someone's tongue. In the, and for this passage, we must link it with the uh, previous passage and also the passage after this. Yeah, if we look at verse 1, verse 1, uh, I guess um, Pastor Vincent or someone have preached on this before verse 1 said my brothers and sisters most of you shouldn't become teachers that's because you know what you know that those of us who teach will be held more accountable so james said most of you shouldn't become teachers so in a way james tried to say uh, obviously there are a lot of people claiming themselves as teachers they try to um, make themselves higher than someone else. They, they try to make themselves um, a teachers among the uh, Christians. So James said, obviously, um, most, a lot of you wanted to be teachers and most of you shouldn't, should not become teachers. And obviously, this uh, whole passage, um, James is focusing on a group of arrogant teachers in the church where they slander, they uh, speak about themselves, they, they boast about themselves. And all this does not build out their life. And all this does not benefit the church. So James wanted to point out the issue and talk about it. So he talked about the tongue in this passage. So these um, arrogant Teachers, they have very strong, they have very powerful tongue. But their power is not from heaven. Their power is from the hell. Yeah. So um, James said in verse 6, The tongue is also a fire. The tongue is the most evil part of the body. It makes the whole body impure. It sets a person's whole way of life on fire. And the tongue itself is set on fire 
by hell. The power is great. It's just like the spark that burned down the whole great forest. But the power is not from heaven. The power is from the hell. So that is the way that um, James linked the power of these uh, false teachers with the power of the devil, with the power of hell. They are powerful. That's correct. But the power is not from heaven. So we can see the tongue uh, have the power of heaven and hell. So either your tongue have the power of heaven or your tongue have the power of hell. So that's what uh, James tried to express in this passage. When I was um, in my secondary school, uh, I loved my uh, headmistress a lot. Yeah, our headmistress, um, she is skinny, thin and short. Yeah, she is not even uh, up to my shoulders height. Yeah, quite short. Uh, such a lady. Uh, she is skinny, short, and old lady. Yeah, she is. Um, she she is at the age uh, near to retirement. Yeah, when I was in secondary school, but we love her a lot. Although she is that, um, she looks so weak. But um, and I guess if some if one of the strong men in the school give him a give her a punch. For sure, she will collapse, right? She is so so small, so skinny, but yet this old, weak and short lady, she tamed the whole school. Can you imagine such a lady tamed the whole secondary school? All the students will listen to him. Even the worst student will give her respect. So she is very wise. From what I know, she is a, uh, she is a Christian. I remember one of the speech that he gave in the um, school assembly. Yeah, I can never re- I can never forget what she have said. She said, "My my dear students, I believe you are all of you are mentally well. I believe you can differentiate." What is power switch? What is door? And me. Don't punch on the power switch. Don't punch on the door. You will feel pain. I will not. If you are unhappy with me, come to my office. My office is always open. Welcome. This is what she said in the assembly, in the school assembly. She's so wise, she's so calm, she, she does not get angry in her speech. She just so calmly said what she should, she should say. And all the students will laugh. And all those students, um, we, we say the bad students, uh, who did those things, they feel so shameful. And she really treats the whole school so tame and under her control. She is so wise. She looks skinny, she, she looks short, but she is wise. What about us? Is your tongue have the power of heaven or the power of hell? Do your tongue have the power? Um, do, does your tongue let the chaos come into order? Or your tongue that spoil everything, crush everything? Made everything into mess. Your tongue has the power of heaven and hell. So how do you use your tongue? How do you, uh, which kind of power do you use? Um, do you link it up with your tongue? If we look at this passage, um, we may relate it to what Jesus has said, especially the later part of this passage. Verses 9 to 12, James said, With our tongues we praise our Lord and Father. With our tongues we curse people. We do do it even, even though people have been created to be like God. Praise and cursing come out of the same mouth, my brothers and sisters. It shouldn't be this way. Can fresh water and salt water flow out of the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree produce olives? Can a grapevine produce figs? Of course not. 
and a salt water spring can produce fresh water either. If we link what、uh, James has said to what Jesus has said in Matthew、uh, chapter twelve, verse thirty-three to thirty-five,、um, let us read these few verses. If you make a tree good, its fruit will be good. If you make a tree bad, its fruit will be bad. You can tell a tree by its fruit. You nest of poisonous snakes. How can you who are evil say anything good? Your mouth say everything that is in your heart. A good man says good things. These come from the good that is stored up inside him. An evil man says evil thing. These come from the evil that is stored up inside him. So if we compare what Jesus have said and what James have said, there's the、uh, some part of connection there. Uh, um, James say, um, obviously seems like he is、uh, relating to what Jesus has said、uh, in the analogy. So here he tried to say、um, the tongue is a reflection of the heart. From Jesus' word, we can see、uh, what we say. It reflects in、um, it reflects our heart. So your tongue is the reflection of your heart. Whatever you say. People can tell、um, how you are. <clears throat> a few weeks ago,、um, when I look, when I was、um, talking with、um, my wife,、uh, we often have、uh, tea time or supper time and sit down and chit chat, talk about the day, talk about our work, and、um, before bed we'll pray for one another or we'll pray pray together. So <clears throat> a few weeks back,、uh, when My wife was、um, talking. We are talking about our days.、Um, she told me that、um, something that is shameful <laughs> to her.、Uh, that is shameful in in her workplace. <clears throat> On、uh, that day,、uh, she talked to her colleagues, discussing their jobs, and of course, they talk about their boss. Yeah. So、uh, the colleague says, "I、uh, the boss." Will just bring us nowhere, yeah.、Um, he is, he cannot do his job well. And my wife said,、uh, "Yeah, that's right.、Uh, technically, he is quite weak. Yeah, so he can talk a lot, but he cannot do the job well." When she turned around, guess who she see? Yeah, the boss is at their back, <coughs> and. She said that is so shameful,、uh, but she pretend nothing have said and nothing happened, and、uh, move on, continue with their job. And when she come back and talk about it,、uh, she said, "I'm not lying. That's something true. Yeah, he is really weak in the technical part. So,、um, what whatever we say." Whether we say it intentionally or unintentionally, it actually reflects our heart. Whatever we believe, whatever we、uh, is in our heart, whatever we think of someone, our our、uh, thoughts about someone, whether we speak, we talk about it intentionally or unintentionally, it reflects what we believe. That is our heart. So I believe. Um, and I believe that、uh, those who sp- spoke unintentionally, actually they are more real to your heart. Things that we say intentionally, it may be cover up. We may、uh, decorate, decorate our words, make it flowery, make it nice. But those words that we say unintentionally is more real, and is more.、Um, Right,、um, according to your heart. So,、um, our heart, the tongue is a reflection of our heart. We can see one person. We can see、um, how is this person by what he or she have said, and we can judge from there. So when you look, when you、um, read through this passage,、uh, this. Especially in chapter three, we can see that、um, from the beginning, James tried to say、uh, those false teachers 
uh, they shouldn't be teachers. Yeah, he said a lot of people try to be teachers, but they shouldn't be because they boast about themselves, they boast um, about a lot of things, but they cannot do it. So that is also the core teaching of the uh, book of James, that they need to, uh, we need to live out our life uh, according to our faith, according to our heart. We shouldn't be doing it in a way that uh, we segregate our heart and our life. We do in another way, and we think like another way. It doesn't fix our heart, and it doesn't fix our belief. So in chapter 3, James are blaming those false teachers because they try to say a lot, but they, can, they, they do nothing well. So James are condemning them from uh, using, the mouth, using their tongue with the power from the hell to burn down the whole church. So this passage, we, as we see, it seems like it's uh, hopeless. And especially in the first few verses, um, James said, all of us, uh, in verse 2, James said, all of us get tripped trip out in many ways. Suppose someone is never wrong in what they say, they, then they are perfect. They are able to keep their whole body under control. So if you look at this whole passage, do you feel a deep helplessness? So then who can be perfect? So then who can control your time? Since this is so hard, no one can control someone else's time. Then who can control their own time? So this whole chapter, we felt the helplessness, the deep helplessness. Then who can help us? What can we do? So do we just um, do nothing and let it be? We, talk, we speak what we can, we, we can, we speak what we want because no one can tame our tongue. Is that the real situation? Who can control our tongue? The answer is Christians. Those who have the wisdom from God. Those who have the wisdom from heaven. And that will be preached in the next part of the passage, yeah, from verse 13 to 18, talking about uh, the wisdom from heaven and the wisdom from earth, from devil, or the wisdom from hell. Yeah, so that will be preached in the next part, and I guess uh, Pastor Vincent will go deep into that. So today, uh, we, we are just foc focusing on this part, uh, talking about the time, the power of time. Um, our tongue has the power of either heaven and hell. We, we can choose which kind of power we want to use. Is it the healing power, the power that brings chaos into order, or the power that destroys and burns down everything? Our tongue is a reflection of our heart. Whatever we say intentionally or unintentionally, it reflects who you are. And that's, um, that's all. Uh, from from the from this passage, let us pray. Lord, as we turn to your word, as we read and study your word, we felt helpless, since the tongue is such a, an evil little part of our body that connects the power of hell or the power of heaven. Lord, we pray that you help us. Give us the heavenly wisdom so that we can tame our tongue. Give us the um, heart that we surrender before you. Give us the obedience that we should have so that we obey you and the evil one will run away from us. And so the power of hell will not link up with our tongue. And so our tongue will speak the words that builds up the people around us, not burning them down. Lord, we pray that you help us and lead us so that our tongue can glorify your name. The praise and the words that build up others will come out from our mouth. The words that are gracious, the words that brings healing, the words 
that brings joy, the words that build up others, the words that really give people life. Lord, we pray for all of us to be your channel of blessing through our time, that the power of heaven will dwell in us. The power of heaven will flow through our tongue to the people around us and make your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.